Okay. Um, square root of this fraction. So we're going to take each individually. What's the square root of 16? 4. Square root of 81 is 9. These are on your exam, not calculator section, right? This stuff is the not calculator. You can do that. Yeah, you'll have your multiplication table, but you won't have your calculator on these types of questions. Okay, so the square root of 16 is 4. And then there's two zeros after the decimal. So instead of two zeros and I square root that, it would become one zero. <clears throat> okay, exponent rules. Please know these. Okay, so coefficients do what it says. Multiply. 21. The base is x. It gets repeated how many times? What is the rule when you multiply? You do what? Add. Number two is you having to think exponent zero. Anything, I don't care what I put in that bracket, anything to the zero is one. Okay, 7 to the 11. So 7 is a base here, not the coefficient. 7 is a base. So 7 is the base to the, what do you do? Subtract, right? On this one, the coefficient is in that bracket. The coefficient is in this bracket, so it needs to get squared. So my new coefficient is 9. What do you do with the rule, exponent to an exponent? Multiply. So like I said, these rules, you got to have them memorized. Multiply, add exponents, divide, subtract. Exponent to, multiply. Okay, this one is... 20 divided by 4, 5, x to a subtract. This one, the base, the base is 5, so understand the difference between the words coefficient and base, and the exponent is? 13. Yep. What am I looking at? This one? The, the base is 5. The base is 5. So do you know what that would look like if I really wrote it out long way? No. It would look like this. 5 times 5 times 5. 7 fives got multiplied, and then six more fives got multiplied. So how many fives did I repeat altogether? Thirteen. You see what was happening? Yeah. So I just five times five equals five. Well, five to the thirteen would be a big number, like. It'd be 5 times 5 times 5 times 7 5. Yeah, it's like a massive number. Right? I don't even know if my calculator would do it. It might be so big. That's how big it is. 5 times, right? 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. Okay. Um, here, it's what is the thing when anything to the 1? Same thing. Same thing. If you have an exponent one, it doesn't change anything. And the last one in this section, multiply the coefficients. 
rules on the exponent stuff. X5, because I wanted to see if you could catch yourself understanding that there's really a 1 on that. Right? Okay, evaluate. What does the word evaluate mean? Get me a number. When you're said and done, I want a number. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is simplify this. So this is a base of 5, exponent rule 2, because I subtract. But this says evaluate, so what is the answer? 25. Okay, so I had to take that one step further yet. Okay, 4 squared, okay, but well this is negative 4 squared. So here's my question. Everybody's probably already with the 16. Is it plus or minus 16? Minus. Because it is doing this. Hey, it's saying bed mass. What's 4 squared? 16 times negative 1. That's what it's doing. Okay, 4 to the 0. Anything to the 0? 1. 8 to the 1, 8, evaluate, so then my answer would be 9. So I could combine that in a, like 3 or 4 long, right? I could put this rule with this rule and this rule, evaluate. Okay, matching, this is a matching question on your exam. Classify these numbers. We have natural numbers whole numbers, integer numbers, rational, irrational. Does anybody remember just what natural numbers are? One, One and et cetera, et cetera. Now we have whole numbers. What are, what are we adding? Now we've added zero into the mix. Integers, what did we add on to the numbers now with integers? Negatives now get into the mix. Rational numbers, what else am I adding into this? Repeating decimals. Repeating decimals. And numbers. Fractions, decimals that repeat, decimals that stop, fractions. Irrational is everything that's not that. So what's not any of those? Decimals that go, 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 right? There's no pattern. Okay, so two fifths would be a which one? Rational. The square root of twenty five is five. So five is natural. The square root of thirty. Ooh, I don't think we can do the square root of 30 as a perfect amount, right? So any square root that's not one of the perfect ones is irrational. Okay, square roots that aren't your 36, 25, those ones, any other square root is irrational because it's a decimal that will just carry on. Negative 2. Integer. This decimal and then these dots mean that there's just, it's going for going, going. This would be irrational. Zero. Whole number. I always remember that one for some reason because whole number has a O in it. Ten. Natural. Negative eight. Do you think integer? There's a decimal, but it just stopped. So what do we call decimals that stop? Rational. Decimal, and it goes repeat, repeat, repeat. 
Okay. So that's also rational. Okay? So again, that's on your exam. I think it's in a multiple choice or matching or something like that. Okay, you do not have a calculator on the exam to do this question. The square root of 52 to one decimal place. Give me a square root number you know that's close to that. The square root of 49 is seven. That's okay. What is another square root that would be on the other side of it? Square root of 64 is eight. So the square root of 52 is gonna be between seven and eight. 7 point, 7.1, 7.2, 7 great guesses, okay? It's a guess, so I'm accepting a few, right? Um, I would definitely be on the low seven, right? What, one decimal place. 7.21. So 7.2 was a closer guess. Okay, four to the negative two. What's the negative exponent rule? Flip. This is the flip rule. So it's going to move to the bottom. 1 over 16 would be the evaluation. Okay, negative exponent. So I flip. And I believe I am going to give you a chart with some of your cubes on it, but do we have this one maybe memorized? 27. 27. Okay, there's a few things going on here. Um, some might stay and some might move, right? So this one, there's a 2, so I'm actually going to leave it because it doesn't have anything with a negative exponent. So it stays. Three to the negative two, that's a move. So it's gonna go to the bottom with a three squared. On the bottom is negative, so it's gonna have to move to the top. So negative exponents move, whether it's from the top to the bottom or bottom to the top. So this is two times 25, which is 50 over 9. All without a calculator. It's amazing what we can do. Okay, this has a negative exponent. Move it. Negative exponent. Move it. Negative exponent on the bottom. So I'm going to move it to the top. Does that kind of make sense? It went from the bottom, now it's just the top. And this last one. So eight to the negative two, I'm going to move it. Two squared, I'm actually going to leave that there. Do you see why I'm leaving it? That doesn't have a negative on it. I'm leaving it on the bottom. Oh, this is awkward. What should I put on the top there right now? One. One over 64 times four. Six. 
What did you guess? Okay, what is the rule? What is the rule when your exponent is a fraction? So we got this one down, right? When your exponent is a negative, that's the flip rule. What's the rule when your exponent is a fraction? It becomes a? A radical. It becomes the root. Okay, so I'm going to break this apart here. So 27 to the 1 -third, we're going to have to do some work with the coefficient. And what is the rule with the exponent to an exponent? What are you doing there? Just multiply. So what does that become multiplied? Five thirds. Because this is 5 over 1 times a 1 over 3. 5 thirds. Okay. 27 to the 1 third is the same as me doing this. 27 to the 1 third. That's the same. 27 to the 1 third, like that. The root. Fraction exponents become the radicals. So what is this without your calculator? Three, the cubed root. Okay, this one is division, so just 8x to the, so what are we going to do with those exponents there with the division? Subtract, okay, I'm going to go over to the side somewhere, 2 thirds subtract a quarter. What do you want to do with fraction work there? How do you do fractions? Common denominator. Make that a 12, make that a 12, which means this is a times by a 4. This got times by 3. With 8 minus 3 over 12. So 5 twelfths. And again, without a calculator, without a calculator. All this, this unit is, the whole thing is mostly on that section. Okay, multiply, so 30. X to the exponent rule. Add. So over here on the side, doing some work. Again, we thought common denominator it. So I'm going to make a 15. So this one would be now a 5. And this one would be a 6. We have a couple things going on. What do you want to do first? The brackets. The brackets. So we're going to do this. Okay. 
We're gonna put this together first. So figure that we're gonna figure this out and then we still have to do the two thirds after. So what do you wanna do in this bracket situation? If these are multiplied, then we're going to add. So three fifths times one quarter. What do you want to make the bottom into? 20. 20. I'll be timesing that by four. I'm going to be timesing that by five. Okay, so now the final answer, exponent to an exponent, so now I multiply. So 17 times 2 is 34, 20 times 3 is 60. <coughs> Okay, understanding exponents and radicals put together. So again, one half, when you have a fraction exponent, it becomes a radical. So that's where you get 16 to the one half. Okay. The square root of 16 is the same as that, right? There's always implied a 1, there's always implied a 2 up there if you don't write anything. So I said I want it in radical form. On your test, this was very confusing and some people didn't know. Like I wanted this and then I wanted that. I wanted you to understand the format and the evaluation of it. Well, it says radical form with all the numbers, so that would be that. And then this would be a further step to evaluate. Yeah, I didn't write it here, but on your test I had written, I want the radical form and then simplify. Okay, so this would be 27 to the 1 third because there's secretly a one on top of this 27. Third is the radical part of it. Okay, eight to the one third is the radical of eight, and then where would you put the one third part of it? So this means the cubed root of eight, which is Two. Okay, so this one, x to the what exponent? There's a 9 there and there's a 5 there, so how do you write it? It would be 9 over 5, because the radical part is the bottom of the fraction. x to the, there's a 7 here. What is the radical part? There's secretly a 2 there, the square root of. The square root of, I don't write a 2 there. So this would be 7 halves. So if I give you this, where do you put the 5 and where do you put the 7? 5 there. The radical part is the 7th root. OK. 
Okay, so this one, what's the common theme here? There's a four here, there's a four here. So what is that common theme? The fourth root of an x cubed and a y. The bottom numbers, then we can't really put them t together at all. It doesn't work like that. Then. No, you wouldn't have one like that because you can't do anything. Okay, so this one is the radical 9x to the 4th to the 1 half. This whole unit, so I put it in brackets to the one half. That's a, what it looks like as a radical, and what would it simplify to? So what's the new coefficient? Three x to the two. Yep. Okay, next. Evaluate this, so we can go 25 to the negative 3 halves, like that. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to evaluate this. What is the square root of 25? 5 and then to the negative 3. Because I feel like I don't want to do a 25 to the negative 3 and then square root that. That seems hard for me. But I can square root 25 first. Okay, so bottom fraction exponents mean radical it. And what is this? Well, how do we work with this now? There's a flip, so 1 over 5 cubed, that's the flip. I want the full answer evaluated. Okay, all without a calculator you're doing these things. <coughs> All right, two more questions today and I will let you go. What is a mixed radical? So, the square root of 18, I'm going to break it down. What magic number is 18 divisible by? Call it a magic number. Nine. Nine times what? 9 times 2. So I'm going to change it to the square root of 9 and the square root of 2. Does that make sense? It's still the square root of 18, right? Okay, we just have a 7 in front, so I'm going to keep it there for the ride. But is already a mixed radical? It is, but I'm going to simplify it to its lowest mixed radical. A lowest mixed radical would be when your radical can't break down anymore. Okay. What is the square root of 9? 3 as a whole number now. That's not a radical anymore, right? 3 whole number. 7 whole number. Then you can put whole numbers with whole numbers. So then this would be 21 root 2. Okay, this one is mixed and I want to go to an entire. 
That's the answer. 20 run root 2? What? What a, what a what? Am I good? Yep. Okay. So this is a mix, and we want to go under one radical. So let's pay attention. This is the cube root. We're not doing square roots. This is a cubed root. So how did I get myself a 5? The cubed root of what before that? 125. So the 5 was because I would have done a cubed root of 125. So I can now put these together. So this would be the cubed root of, what is that times? The cube root of 500. So you need to be able to go both ways. And yes, I put one of each on your exam.